Once the dead man is revived, we can ask him five questions, at which point he will die again, mm -hmm. never to be re-revived. Were you killed in the Battle of the Everhorse? Yes. Four more questions, right? Yes. No, 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 that, that wasn't for you. Did that count as a question? Yes. Damn it. Only answer when I talk to you, okay? Yes. Why did you say okay at the end of that? I didn't. Fantastic. Where's the shovel? Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. It was only a matter of time before we had another Dungeons and Dragons movie. I mean, with the influx of new D&D stuff from Critical Role to Dimension 20 to Harmon Quest to The Legend of Vox Machina, there is just no shortage of D&D material these days. I wonder when it will seem like an oversaturated topic. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that this is the first theatrical live action Dungeons and Dragons movie since 2000s uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, the one with Jeremy Irons going crazy. I can't do you good. I can use every ounce of your rage. My destiny. Let their blood rain from us, God! I don't know what's going on in, with those clips, but oh my god, it's great. I love that movie. <laughs> that distinction is probably why this one has a subtitle along with also using it to kickstart a series of movies set in the Dungeons and Dragons main lore as well. D&D Honor Among Thieves is a pretty fun exploration of the world involving a party of four people of various backgrounds and classes trying to pull off a heist for various reasons, but mostly to stop a former party member from doing something nefarious involving a powerful evil red wizard, and right away it is a lot of fun. It does have some issues I'll get into in a bit, but overall this is a great ride, and a lot of that leans on the strength of the party itself. Although Justice Smith as the self-depreciating wizard Simon and Sophia Lillis as the half-tiefling druid Doric have great chemistry together and add to the group as a whole, the absolute clear standouts that we spend the most time with are Chris Pine's bard Edgen and Michelle Rodriguez's barbarian Holga Kilgore. Man, is Michelle Rodriguez fun to watch in this, especially with her fight scenes. Creative and acrobatic and the chemistry with her and Pine as like a pseudo-sibling pair instead of a romantic pair is wonderful. Absolutely love it. Olga's uncaring attitude and lack of situational awareness leads to plenty of funny scenes, while Edgen's planning and Chris Pine's overall carefree demeanor keeps the humor on par and the story focused. Mostly. It is a very funny film, and most of the jokes from the visual gags to character lines land exceedingly well. My theater was extremely lively with this, too. I had one guy in front of me who shook his chair violently with how much he was laughing at some of the jokes, especially in the end. On the other side was a woman who was loudly guffawing pretty often too throughout the entire film. It's just a very well-written film. It even includes classic tropes like the DM inserting a helper player character to do a one-shot or help the quest and broaden the lore for a mission. This character being the paladin Zank, played by, I'm sorry if I mispronounce this, Rege Jean Page, in a very fun role. Oh, and the effects. Oh my god, this film looks amazing. Very clearly used its $150 million budget effectively. You have practical sets, practical creature costumes, and puppets, along with some CGI. Oh, it's it's so cool. The behind-the-scenes footage from Legacy Effects, who did pretty much all of the effects that I could tell, in the film is just wonderful to watch. From the practical Dragonborn suit to the practical Aarakocra suit with working wings? Are you kidding me? It's so fucking cool. Like seriously, just wow <laughs> to think that that's real. The only practical effects that I thought looked subpar were in a very quick scene featuring a tabaxi baby and adults that they just looked really weird and very, very fake. It was weird. It stood out to me. But everything else was just astounding work. It looked and felt real and was just awesome. Even the CG 
beasts like the Mimic and the Tubby Red Dragon looked good and menacing. The practical sets also really help sell everything too. They look expansive, yet lived in, and are just so cool to see the characters walking around in, especially anything taking place in the city of Neverwinter. It's so cool. I've been saying that a lot in this review, but it just is. It really, really is. It's kind of worth seeing just for all of the sets alone. They're just that neat. The directors, a duo of Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, clearly had a vision and knew how to accomplish it. Even the antagonist with Daisy Head as the quiet yet menacing Red Wizard Sophina and Hugh Grant as Forge the Con Man were fun to watch walk around and play with magic in the sets. Unfortunately though, there are some issues keeping this film from true greatness. And I'm not gonna nitpick and be that kind of asshole and whine that they didn't follow the game's rules here like, oh no, the druid wild shape like four times in a row. Where you can't wild shape into an owl bear or something. I really don't even know the rules. I don't care about that. What's the rule anyway? If the DM thinks it looks cool, it can stay. Anyway, <laughs> no, the the biggest issue I had with this film is the length and the ending. At 2 hours and 14 minutes, including a quick mid-credit joke scene, it is fairly long. While decently paced so it doesn't feel boring, it is still very lengthy and the filler is obvious in some points. Some scenes could have been trimmed or skipped without adding much to the story or effects. And that ending, ah, it's so obvious what was going to happen as soon as they finish setting up the opening, but then instead of subverting expectations, they go for the tropey route and it sucks. That bugs me so much. Let their blood rain from the sky! It doesn't ruin the film, but it's really annoying to see all these characters getting emotional when I'm like, yeah, I know what's gonna happen, it's fine. Oh, just so dumb. The ending magic fight is fun at least, and there's a wonderful setup for more stories in this world with these characters or not, although it does feel a little too clean cut of an ending, unfortunately. There's also a fair bit of deus ex machina thrown in, essentially with a certain staff, which whatever, I can ignore that. It suits it and it's fine and leads to some cool scenes, so whatever. The the only other thing that I want in this movie is more monsters. We get a fair bit here, including two dragonborn, which I'm fairly sure is just reusing one costume, some halflings and other races, but I wanted more creatures. Again, there's still plenty, but there are some that are either just not used or just background elements. They mentioned a beholder at one point, but do you ever get to see one in the movie? No. We get to see weird brain things that are in a trailer, but that's about it. They don't do any thing and they never show back up. Boo! Give me a sequel with more practical monsters, please. Especially with how good they all look, aside from the tabaxis. Still, I, I just can't get over how good they look overall. If I were to fix this film up a bit, I would trim down some sections with not a lot going on. I'd maybe slow down on Edgen's flashbacks because we see a lot of him and someone else under sheets, which I don't, why is that a trope? That is a weird trope, but whatever. I'd maybe add in some more monsters, change that horrible ending to something else. That's, that's a big one that needs to be changed. Just, ugh. Also, I'd maybe tease a more direct sequel because I do like these characters and I want to see more of them. I'm not sure what, maybe something with Paladin Zank to bring him back into the fold. Either way, it's still an extremely solid film that opens the door for more creativity and fun ideas. A D&D heist movie instead of a we gotta save the world movie. I love that idea. That is cool, that is so much fun. Give me another low stakes kind of story set in this world before we start going into the whole, we have to save the world, the demons are coming, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, give me some more low stakes, I like that. That's what we need right now. Too many high stakes movies. Overall though, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves gets an eight out of 10 from me. Hey, hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another one. I love the idea of Dungeons and Dragons. I love it in uh, the various media that I've watched. I haven't actually played a game yet. <laughs> Aside from like maybe a video game based on the lore and everything, I've read up on the lore, I've watched some people talk about it. I read the webcomic Goblins, which I'm still waiting on that show, by the way. What the hell happened with that? It's a good webcomic, you should go read it. But everything else from like Harmon Quest, Critical Role, Legend of Vox Machina, it's clear we're gonna keep getting more and more Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And I am totally okay with that. I love all of this lore 
before. I love all of these monsters. I love everything you can do in it. It's just a lot of fun and it's so complicated and expansive that you can do whatever you want and how it's like a shared lore, which is very interesting. I really find that very, very cool. I feel like the next thing we're going to get is a Vox Machina movie, which I'd be down for. To be fair, I haven't seen season two yet, but I really like season one, so we'll see. Is Harmon Quest still going on? I know there's like shit happening with Dan Harmon right now, but I don't know if that's still happening, but <laughs> it's fun to see like them playing D&D, but then they animate it alongside it. That kind of thing's just fun. Just the creativity and shit you can do with everything is just so much fun, so stupid, so cool. Whenever I think of d and I am constantly reminded of the one time I had a chance to play back in middle school. I stayed in to watch the, the Dungeons and Dragons Club play around to see what would happen, and I was disappointed because they really weren't taking anything seriously. They were all like different characters from different video games. One person was a big daddy from Bioshock and his weapon was a dildo on a stick because teenagers. And I got thrown out because I was talking too much. <laughs> But that was then, this is now, I don't know. <laughs> I want more movies set in this world. I wanna see more creatures. I especially wanna see more practical effects. There was also the snake man that was on screen for like maybe two seconds in the very beginning. And he looked amazing. I wanna, I gotta find a picture of this guy. He looks so cool. Anyway. <laughs> What did you guys think of this movie? Was it accurate to D&D? Do you guys like to play? Do you want more movies in this world, in this setup? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a video. And that's it. Have a great day, and if you're not, have a better one. See ya. I'm just a ghost in your stereo. The feeling that we are the shipwreck in the underdog. You're just a ghost. I'm not sure. You're not just a girl.